What is up guys? Um, today we're going to look at a magic deck that I have created for standard. Um, I really like this deck. I mean it's not really top tier. It doesn't play the best cards. But um, it's pretty fun. This is a heartless summoning deck. Um, you know a lot of the best cards or heartless summoning is really good in the last block when you had like bunch of mirrors and mirror superior and haven gold lich and all this stuff that could really abuse the heartless summoning engine and a lot of people say that oh you know it's that engine's kind of gone now there's really nothing you can do and uh you know i'm trying to i'm trying to see trying to figure out a way to you know rebuild that engine and see what we can do with the cards um heartless summoning if you don't know what it does it um uh, makes creature spells you cast cost two less that's enchantment, but all your creatures get minus one, minus one. Um, but that said, basically this is ramping two turns earlier. So this is better than ramp, really. I mean, if you get it out early, you can bring it, you can drop in like a big guy. You can drop a craw, uh, what is his name, uh, a crater hoof behemoth on turn six. You know, earlier, depending on what else you got out on the board. But I mean, uh, it really helps you rush threats earlier in the game in this like short mid-range time and uh whether or not that's good in this kind of meta game the standard environment was, remains to be seen but it's still an interesting card the problem with heartless summoning decks like that is uh you know because you want these creatures that are seven eight mana casting costs um it makes your deck curve really weird because if you don't draw heartless summoning in your opening hand you're kind of sitting there dead like you know what I mean, you, you don't have the the adequate ramp to get you to the next level. Um, so playing Heartless Summoning, you obviously need to play a four of most of the time, so you can get to that that point. Um, and even then, you're you're basically rolling the dice, hoping that you pull one in your opening hand. Um, in order to um, kind of neutralize the loss of that, you know, the the negative effects of it, what I've done is added. Uh, early game rank ramp like Farseek oh, as a four of, a couple rangers paths, and things like Gatekeeper Vine and Axebane Guardian, which help add that early mana and early defenders to help you stabilize. Because, what, like, let's face it, if you don't get Heartless Summoning in the first three or four turns, when you do draw into it, you're probably not going to use it, because with ramp, like the normal ramp package, and like, you know, Gatekeeper Vine and Axebane Guardian, you're going to be able to drop the threats anyway. So it's kind of like two avenues of attack. And when you do throw Heartless Summoning into the deck, it just, just gets wild. So without further ado, this is the deck that I got. So we got 23 lands. Uh, we're playing blue, black, green. Um, primarily green. Uh, that is because your early turns are uh, Farseek or Ranger's Path, which we got four Farseeks, two Ranger's Path here, and then Heartless Summoning, which is four. And for the creature base, for early game creatures, we have three Fog Bank, which really helps r real well against aggro. Uh, two Gate Creeper Vine. So this is good because um, sometimes, you, you know, a lot of the late game creatures are double black or, or double green or double blue. And there's a lot of them. And that causes a lot of problems on the board. So you need a card like this to help you fetch those basics. Um, Gate Creeper Vine is nice. Um, we also have Axemane Guardian, which is a, a defender. Um, you tap it, add X mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool, where X is the number of creatures with defender you control. So obviously this with uh, Fog Bank and Gate Creeper Vine, um, you can do some wonderful things. And he curves nicely. He's 3 mana, but he's 0-3. So with Heartless out there, he only costs 1, and he's still a 0-2. It's very significant in this meta. Um, it's a very good card. Like, you know, just just because if you don't pull Heartless, you can you kind of dirtle with Fog Banks, drop an Axebane Guardian or drop another Axebane Guardian, and then just, you know, pump out six or eight mana. It's kind of crazy. Uh, for following that up, we have uh, five drops. Um, we got Thragtus, four Thragtus. Uh, you need it because you just have, you don't have enough early game interaction and fast decks are going to cause a problem, so you need that kind of... Uh, life and stabilizing um, and we have one wolf here Silverheart um, and this is just nice because 
if you have a heartless out, um, your curve is usually like this guy and then dropping into another big bomb or a smaller or a bigger bomb dropped into a wolf or silver heart and you know you're just swinging on turn five or six for 10 or 12 damage and this is kind of crazy it gets out of hand um, we have for six drops we have harvester two harvester of souls this is a little maybe this is a little cute but in testing this card has done so much for me uh, this card is two black and four colorless for a five five uh, it has death touch and whenever a non-token creature dies you may draw a card so when you're in that big combat battle this thing can do so many things for you because if you block with your walls force your walls to die or he blocks something and kills it with death touch or whatever it may be you're gonna draw a bunch of cards uh, in a game, my FNM game today, I drew something like eight or nine cards off of one attack phase, or one uh, combat phase, because of one Harvester of Souls in play. So that is pretty cool. The problem with him is he's a 5-5, five, five, and with Heartless, I'm, so five, five, 5 is the magic number for toughness for this current set, because uh, 5 dodges most of the removal in the set. Like, sure, he can get Celestial Charm, um, but what he can't get hit by is Museum Mortars and uh you know things of that nature so that's nice doesn't get hit by a searing spear doesn't get hit by brimstone volley you know unless it's morbid so that's cool the problem is when you have heartless summoning out he becomes a 4-4 four four. so it remains to be seen if i'll keep him in here um i think wolf here silver heart uh the effect the plus four plus four is just it's just so great so offers this harvester of souls like i could probably see me dropping down to one i'm not sure yet um we also have Soul of the Harvest, which is another six mana casting cost creature, similar to Harvest of the Souls, except this is double green. Um, he has Trample and he's a six six, so so he's already uh, you know, much more offensive than Harvester of the Souls. What's very cool about this guy is uh, whenever whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you draw a card. So this is how you continue to drop threat after threat. He's a really strong uh, draw engine. And he's one of your primary targets. That's why we have three of him. Um, following that, we go to, uh, or we have one more six drop. Um, this is Sphinx of the Chimes. He is a two blue, four colorless, five six flyer. Uh, you discard two non land cards with the same name to draw four cards. The pro now, this seems like an awkward piece in here, and I've I've gone down to one copy, and I'm still debating. I actually want to go back up to two copies. Maybe I'll go back to two copies, drop a Harvester of Souls, and add in a Wolf, Wolf or Silverheart or Silverheart or something. I'm not sure yet, but we'll, uh, the reason why I like this is this. Heartless Summoning, we want it early, so we got to play four. Farseek, we want it early, so we got to play four. Thragtus, you know, we want it, got to play four. Axeman Guardian, he's a kind of very good mid-range card, we got to play four. So the thing with these is they we play four because we want to see them early, you know what I mean? Or we we just need to see them often. So one heartless summoning. Once you land a heartless summoning, it's great. And unless they remove it, which most game ones, unless you're challenging some control deck, they're not going to remove this card. Unless they remove it, these ones that you pull later in the game, they're dead in hand. Same thing with Farseek. You know, you want to hit your critical mass of like six or seven mana, but after that point, you know. Like, sure, I mean, I guess you could cast Farseek again and get another land, but chances are it's not the play you want it to do. So that's where Sphinx of the Chimes comes in. Because as the game wanes on and you start drawing dead cards, you can discard these dead cards, like two Farseeks or two Heartless Summonings, to get you four cards. And that is huge. That is very, very huge. Like, I don't know how to really explain, but this is, like... It is such a dynamic thing and such a big uh, play in the game. Remember, Ancestral Recall is a you know one mana to draw three, and then this is just like a, the effect is so similar. You know what I mean? You're drawing four uh, at the cost of just discarding stuff that you weren't going to use. So that's why we got one in here. For the seven drops, we have we only have um, Sphinx of Uthun, and he's a five six flyer, uh, and he's basically a he comes into play and then you do a factor fiction. So this is great because you know you draw, you dig five deep and then you get to make sure that you're keeping tempo, drawing into threats. 
So that that's why I like that's why I'm playing with the uh, four of him. He's a really good late late game draw. It's possible to drop one for Sphinx of, Sphinx of the Chimes, but I don't think so. I think Sphinx of the Thune, he lands, the effect happens, you're happy. And finally, we cap off with our eight drops, which is two Crater Hoof Behemoth and one Grizzlebrand. Um, Grizzlebrand is great, um, but four black is kind of uh, kind of demanding, especially with the mana base we have. Um, that said, uh, he's still he's still a crazy guy. Um, I'm gonna opt against him actually. I think uh, I would rather have another Wolf Hill Silver Heart, Wolf Hair Silver Silver Heart. So I'm actually gonna change that right now. And then we still have the two Crater Hoof Behemoths. Um, Crater Hoof Behemoths is the perfect card to uh, curve into. It just ends games, especially when you look at the power and toughness of the threats you have on the board. Quick look at the sideboard, which is of course metagame dependent. You change it depending on you know what what you feel you're facing. Two Knight of Infamies, two little with Geist of Saint Traft, as well as white or Celestia decks. Three Deathrite Shamans to deal with uh, Reanimator. Um, two Curse of Echoes to deal with Control. Three Tribute to Hunger and three Liliana of the Veil, vale. and these are deal to deal primarily with. Uh, Creature, uh, you know, decks that run like single creature threats or whatnot that, you know, you have no way of dealing with. Um, for instance, in my meta, there's a very good hexproof deck that just destroys my deck. You know, it just puts out too much damage that I can't deal with. It just goes over the top. So I need this as my answer. So I have six cards that are devoted to it in the sideboard, and then two appetite for brain. I uh, brains. I actually want four deathrite shamans. I, I think the card is extremely underrated. It's a very good card. Um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut one card here so that we can change that. But that's basically the deck. So we'll try it out in a bit and we'll see how we do.